All right, so uh, I'm going to be talking about two things in the news. One, the second one is going to kind of lead into our, uh, what do you call it, topic for the day. But uh, the first one's going to be happy and everything's going to be wonderful. So uh, some people have done some demining on the new PS5. They've been doing it. Excuse me. Uh, people have had hands-on with the PS5, in fact. So we've had a physical look of what it looks like when somebody's using it, what the load times look like. It's been looking pretty good. Uh, but the data mining, people have found a lot of interesting features that will be allowed in the new PS5. So one of them is going to be wish lists. And this is really great because if you have the PlayStation app on your phone, you can have wish lists there, and I have it. Uh, but if you go into the PlayStation Store through the PS4 or if you did it through the PS3 back in the day, you couldn't have a wish list. You just had to like manually think, okay, these are the games I want, and then look them up in the store. So they're going to be finally adding wish lists to the PS Store on the PS5, which is a really great thing. I don't know if you can see other people's wish lists or not. That I don't know, but you will at least be able to keep track of games that you're interested in. Um, so that's going to be a really huge deal. Another thing that they added is that they're going to be allowing parties up to 100 people. I think the current limit is either 8 or 16. I'm not quite sure. But they're going to have parties up to 100 people. Now, currently, there are no games that support 100 players. Uh, as Creedon was pointing out, uh, Fall Guys can support up to 80. But uh, currently, there are no games that are going to have 100. And almost certainly not a game where you're going to be playing with 100 different friends. So why would we need a party size of 100 people? Uh, well, I'm going to be speculating here, but my guess is that these are not just regular parties because in the PS4, if I want to make a party, I have to create a party and then I have to invite my friends and then, you know, I'm the party leader. And then if I leave, it'll go to somebody else. And if everybody leaves and the party's just done and the next time we have to start a new one. Well, with these 100 people parties, apparently they're adding a feature that you can both name your parties and you can attach an image to it. So what I'm thinking is these are going to be persistent parties, uh, kind of like what you might see on a Discord server where people can kind of pop in and out over time. So I think that this is probably just kind of a way to do uh, kind of a clan chat if you're playing an online game or something like that. So I'm thinking they're moving more into this persistent parties versus these uh, one-off parties. Now, they'll probably still have that feature, I would assume. Uh, but yeah, so this is kind of interesting that they're going to be allowing this feature. Uh, the other really, really big news, and this is going to be very, this is going to be insignificant if you live in the States, but they are going to make universally X button is select, circle is cancel. So if you live in the States, you're used to that. X is select, circle is cancel. If you live here in Asia, circle is select, X is cancel. And the reason for that is originally... When the PlayStation came out in Japan, they were thinking, oh, circle is like, yes, affirmative. X is no. So the circle would be select and the X would be cancel. Now, when they ported games over to the US, for some reason, that swapped. So X was select and circle was cancel. I don't know why that happened, but that is what happened. And for a long time, it wasn't a huge deal. But now with the international community and a lot of games and uh, you know, back then we had region locked. So if you bought a game from, say, Australia, but you live in America, you can't play that game in America unless you have your uh, PlayStation modded. Well, now, you know, these cross uh, international borders play is kind of a standard thing. I myself have an American PSN account and a Taiwanese PSN account. Uh, so being able to play my American games on my Taiwanese account is really really useful because sometimes like for example persona 5 they have it here but they only have the chinese version not the english version so i have to buy that on my american account so being able to play across obviously is really good but then of course you run into problems like oh all my games circle is select except this one game this one circle is cancel and that can be kind of confusing so they're going to make this a universal standard x is select circle is cancel um, so it is kind of a big deal. Uh, they're also changing the share button on the PS4. You have a share button on the DualShock 4. Now on the DualSense 5, they are replacing the share button with a create button. Uh, and what that's going to be doing is now it's going to allow you to create gameplay kit, gameplay clips. Uh, they're also going to allow you to do screenshots. So, you know, you can obviously create content. 
Uh, it's also going to allow you to share your uh, music albums or playlists. So if you have music, you can share that as well. Or voice notes. So you can just kind of, you know, hit the, sh hit the create button, create a voice note for yourself, and then send that on. Uh, it's also going to allow you to send updates. So if you have these great, if you have these big parties, I mean, currently on PS4, they have something called communities. Uh, but when you have these big parties, you're going to be allowed to share updates. So you can send updates or announcement announcements to your party. So if you want to tell all your friends, hey, you know, we're doing a big game night for Fall Guys on Friday, you can put that up there. And then when other people sign in, they can see your announcements. Um, and they are also adding something called a boost mode to the PS4 games that are on PS5. So when you buy a game, it should now have something that on it that says boost mode enabled. And what that means is if you play it on the PS5, it's going to uh, load faster. It's going to have uh, upgrades for possibly textures, that sort of thing. Kind of like what you see on a regular game that you can put on the PS Pro and it runs a little bit better. Well, now certain games, you play them on the PS4, if you play them on the PS5, they're going to run a little bit better. And they also have a mysterious feature called Takedown, but we're not quite sure what that is yet. We've just seen the name of it and nobody quite knows what it is. It'll be interesting to see what this Takedown feature is in the future. Uh, but yeah, so that, that's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, so before I go into my second news thing, because that does lead into our topic, Korean, would you like to jump in or? Oh yeah, of course. Um, what do you speculate is the takedown feature about? I honestly have no idea. It could be anything from, uh, maybe removing content online. I mean, cause currently if like, if you have a Twitch stream or something like that, you can delete it, but I would have to log into Twitch to do that. So it could be something like, oh, okay. You know, if I accidentally clicked the wrong button and shared a video I didn't really want to because I'm sure most of us have done that if you've done these recording things where you hit the button you record something and you meant to delete it and you accidentally upload it and you're like ah oh, that's like five seconds of nothing you know it's the same thing where if you pull out your phone and you're going to take a picture and then you realize that you took a picture of your feet by accident um and you just have to delete that photo so it could be that uh but it could also be something about uh maybe taking down notes off of somebody else's play i really don't know okay. um to me it sounds aggressive so i was like oh is this takedown like you know i use this feature and i can like take you down i don't know <laughs> it's really um because a lot of these times these things too are, are you they use code names uh so it could just be a code name for something it's really completely up in the air uh so yeah i don't really know um not quite connected to this but i i, I did have a side question uh, I know you talked about this before in another episode. You know, you couldn't pre-order your PS5. Do you have an update for our listeners on that? Uh, so they will be releasing a second batch of pre-orders on PS5. Uh, so you will possibly be able to pre-order them. Now, they do say that they expect to sell 7 million PS5s by April. So, I mean, that's long after launch. But we will be getting quite a few. Um but the only other thing is, so we talked about how Amazon was coming out and saying that their pre-orders were maybe none of them, not none of them. Some of them would not be arriving on time. Apparently, other distributors have come out and said the same thing. Uh, so apparently what happened was uh, in the retail industry, there's kind of the, a lot of times there's kind of this policy of accept every pre-order, sort it out later. And it seems like we have that problem now where a lot of these distributors have actually issued more pre-orders than they are allocated units. And so there are a lot of distributors now coming out and saying, you might not get your PS5 on time. That's terrible. That is terrible. But they are. there is supposedly going to be, a, I think, a second wave coming out soon of pre-orders. I don't know if we're going to have that in Taiwan or not, uh, but I've seen rumors of that. So we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. You want to move on to your second interesting topic? Uh, sure. I can do my second topic now. Okay. So my second topic, second topic, I keep stumbling over my words today. I don't know what's going on. Uh, my second topic is, have you heard of Hololive? Have you, so you've heard of Hololive, correct? I have never literally, when I read the show notes for today, I was like, oh, Hololive. 
<laughs> so yeah, okay. So Hollow Live is uh, this new thing where basically, if you have a streamer like on YouTube or something like that. So for instance, we're streaming right now. You're looking at my actual face. Um, have you heard of something called an emojis on the iPhone? I've heard of them. I don't exactly know what they are. I can sort of guess what they are. Okay, so an emoji is basically you do something into your camera, and the they use mocap to basically have the little animated emoji mimic your facial actions. And Hololive basically does this for streaming, where you're on your webcam. It's looking at you know your eyes, your nose, your mouth, using all this facial recognition technology. Kind of like right now, we're using, uh, there's an AI in the system that is editing out our backgrounds and putting in a new background. And if I move left or right, the background, you know, it fills in everything that's not me. So it's kind of the same thing, except it's focusing only on me and not on the background. So basically I'm puppeteering an animated virtual character. Uh, so I could be, you know, anything. And when I talk, it talks. And if I look this way, it looks that way. Uh, so basically it's you streaming as a virtual character. And this is becoming very, very popular right now. Uh, it, you know, be among people who are a shy and maybe they don't really want to show their actual face. Um, I've heard of a lot of female streamers are using it just because uh, normally there is that kind of stereotype of, female streamers having to do all their makeup and, you know, wear certain things. So now they can just kind of sit down and they don't have to worry about, you know, how they look because their physical look is not on screen. There's this virtual character representing them. Um, so it makes them feel a lot more comfortable. So that's basically what Hollow Live is, is it's this software that allows you to stream as a virtual character, basically. Um, so anyway, Hollow Live was created in Japan by a company called Cover. And basically right now it's growing in Japan. It's kind of gaining popularity in, in the West as well. And we've seen some uh, some YouTubers using it in America. Uh, and in Asia in general, it's becoming very, very popular. So there were two streamers in Japan, uh, Kiryu Koko and Akai Hayato. Hayato? I'm sorry, my Japanese uh, romanization reading is not that great. Um, but anyway, these two streamers were streaming and they've been getting a lot of donations. So they wanted to show uh, kind of their audience, hey, you know, this is where our donations come from. So they showed a graphic that basically show, distribute, showed all the different countries that were, dis that were uh, contributing to their streams that were, uh, what's the word? I can't think of it now not subscribing, but donating. They were looking at all the people that were donating. And one of the countries listed, and one of the higher countries listed, was Taiwan. So Taiwan was was doing quite a bit of donations. So this is something that's popular locally here. Now, people in China saw this and said, hey, Taiwan is not a country. It should not be included in your demographics. And so they took offense to the fact that they had listed Taiwan as a country when they were listing where their donations were coming from. So Hollow Live ended up banning these two accounts. I don't remember exactly for how long, uh, but they, they ended up banning these two accounts for it. And when they went and released their statement in Japan and in English and all that, they basically said that the reason that these two people were banned was because uh, they were releasing internal analytics so they were showing where these things were coming from they were saying this is uh kind of an industry secret or whatever uh so they shouldn't have been revealing that information however in their chinese apology they came out and said uh we have banned them because we adhere to the one china policy and so therefore uh it was offensive to uh, the Chinese people. And so therefore, because of this one China policy, we do not acknowledge Taiwan as a country. So basically they were giving two different statements, one stating, oh, it's for technical reasons. And one saying, because we don't believe Taiwan's a country. And this kind of two-faced apology really hurt them because a lot of people in Japan uh, got really mad about it. And a lot of people in Taiwan and other countries were really mad about it. Um, okay, so here uh, I have what they officially wrote. They wrote uh, on the English, they said they were uh, confidential YouTube channel analytics information 
and making statements insensitive insensitive to certain nationalities. So they said that what they what they said was insensitive by saying Taiwan was a country. However, in the Chinese version, they said we're adhering to the one China principle. Uh, so obviously, this caused a lot of ruckus, and this is actually kind of interesting because only 0.2 percent of their current income comes from China. So they actually are getting more money from Taiwan than they are currently from China, uh, but they were still adhering to this policy. So clearly they were trying to expand the market in China by doing this. Now, since then, they've come out and they've apologized for the confusion. And what they've said is in the future, they're going to try to follow the laws, social norms, common wisdom, and the stance of its current government uh, for universal uh, un so it is universal, universally equitable. So basically what they're saying is in the future, uh, what we're trying to do is we're going to make statements that are appropriate within the certain government and we want to adhere to the local laws. So that's basically what they're saying is like, oh, well, this is the law in China. So that's why we followed uh, this line of thinking. But in the future, we'll think about what we're saying and we'll, we'll say something that kind of is acceptable everywhere. So... <laughs> Uh, that's a bit of a scandal. And that's getting into our political topic right now. But before we go into topics as a whole, Korean, would you like to share with us some news? Sure. Or do you have questions? We can take a break from this uh, sensitive topic and talk about s some geeky stuff. We're going to come right back to it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely going to come right back to that. Right. Switching to me. And we can turn off my gameplay. Uh, my news is about the Xbox Series X and PCs. Um, There'll be a link in the show notes uh, for those of you who are watching live. If you're listening to the podcast, uh, please click on the link. It is an article from Extreme Tech. Uh, Extreme Tech is a very famous website where they cover tech news, hardware, and all the stuff that I like because I like building computers. And in the picture next to me, you can see a really shiny computer with liquid cooling. Uh, that is my goal. My computer is pretty shiny, but it doesn't have you know, custom liquid cooling. Anyway, that's off topic. Um, so, in this article, they basically say that the Xbox Series X and the PS5 uh, crushes the equivalent priced PC console in terms of price. So, why this really made me think is because this was something I was thinking about when, uh, if you go back all the way to our first or second show, first show, um, I was thinking about buying a PS5 because I was kind of tired of spending money on uh, screens, spending money on graphics cards, which are the currently the most expensive <laughs> parts of your computer. Um, so I have a 4K graphics card, capable graphics card, and a 4K monitor. And together, those cost more than $1,000. Uh, you know, one of the things we talked about in another show was the uh, three series graphics cards released by NVIDIA. Um, starting with the 3070, which is 500, is a uh, 4K and better than the 2080 Ti. Um, and so that's why I've decided I'm going to just upgrade my computer. But for new people, uh, this made me think. It's like, okay, if I was a new person and I had a, a six or seven year old laptop, I'm like, okay, do I buy a console or do I buy a gaming PC? And this article says for sure you just buy a console. But the thing that made it me change my mind is that if you have an existing game collection if you're using steam family sharing we talked about that in a previous episode as well uh, and you have a huge collection of games i would even say if you have more than 100 games in your steam collection maybe including your epic games free game collection and you have already have a 4k monitor then for sure you just buy a 4k graphics card you don't really need to think about it if you have a 4K graphics card, then just buy a 4K monitor. But if you literally have a minimal gaming collection, I cannot recommend enough the Xbox Series X or the PS5. Um, Adam told us all the exciting stuff about it. Um, unfortunately, um, it, it just is. I mean, to get the power you can get from the PS5 or the Xbox Series X at a price point on a PC is just impossible. I mean to drive things on a 4K monitor, and this is including a 4K monitor. Now, if you're just talking about your 4K TV and playing games from your computer on your 4K TV, that is another story. Um, on a TV, I would definitely suggest 
you could still build a 4K capable computer, but it would still not be 500 USD. Uh, so even that, yeah. So if you're a new gamer or you're upgrading from a poor PC or a really old console, the Xbox Series X or the PS5 is definitely the thing for you. Uh, Adam and I talked about this before. So Adam, what do you think? Uh, so yeah, uh, I was uh, part of the reason that I was looking into this. Uh, I actually looked up, and, and part of the reason that the cost is so low is actually because with a PC you have to buy all the parts individually, but with like say the PS4, five, and the PS uh, and the Xbox Series X, Microsoft or, or Sony can just buy these parts in bulk, and so they can actually save a lot of money on that. That's part of the reason why the cost is so low. Um, but it is kind of interesting because you're, you're bringing up the, that you would need a monitor that can support 4K. But I mean, arguably, if you're doing a console, don't you kind of have to factor in the price of a TV that can do 4K? Yes, but I mean, you can get a 4K TV. Uh, I looked this up during this week. Uh, of course, not a massive TV, you know, like a 48 inch or 55 or 65. But you can get a 37 inch 4K TV in Taiwan. Uh, for two hundred and fifty dollars, U.S. Yes, yeah, U.S. dollars. Oh, this <laughs> is like two hundred fifty dollars. Oh my gosh, that's like that's like it's lunch. <laughs> uh, two hundred uh, fifty U.S. Um, okay, wow, that's cheap. It, it is. I mean, now it's not a great four K TV, but it is. It is cheap. I mean, the cost of TVs are cheap, but four K monitors, on the other hand, have that extremely low latency between your controller and what you do. Uh, that's why people always say if you want to use a TV as your monitor uh, for your computer, there is some sort of input lag because of the way 4K TVs are constructed. Well, there's also the issue of frame rate, right? Most 4K TVs are not going to have the refresh rate of a monitor, correct? To totally true. But even now, I mean, my 4K monitor uh, using DisplayPort 2 uh, I get maximum 60 frames a second. Now, if you want to go to, uh, they've just recently released 120 megahertz 4K monitors and 240, you know. And if you want to get those kinds of monitors, you're paying big money. Not to mention having a graphics card that can drive more than 100 frames per second uh, for okay. a big 4K TV. Do you know what a refresh rate on a typical TV is? Because I don't. Uh, a typical TV, my TV, my uh, Samsung, I bought this almost two years ago, uh, 55 inches, a pretty decent model. I paid about 600 US. Uh, that does 4K at 30 frames per second. Okay. Because I know, I know the, like, for instance, ours does that AI thing where it does the tweening frames to boost the frame rate. Oh, okay. Of uh, certain... But I, I remember. You well, but that's for, like, TV shows, because certain TV shows, like movies... I think they do do they they do what like 20 24 frames per second or something like that so it just fills in the tweening I don't remember but also uh for PC I mean don't you kind of have to factor in versatility I mean if, if for instance if I'm buying a PS5 I can really only play games on it if you're buying a PC I mean you're not just playing games you uh, you're you're also using this for email and other things I mean isn't doesn't that kind of factor into the cost as well it, it, it definitely does, and, and I agree with you there. I mean, I was looking at strictly from a, a, a gaming perspective, somebody who is, a, a, you know, gamers like us. But then again, you know, being middle-aged, it's unlikely you have a lot of time to play games. So maybe in that case, th that, that sort of pushes the case for the PlayStation or the Xbox Series X because you don't play a lot of games. You play maybe even, like me, play an, a max hour a day and maybe even you when you're busy you don't have any time to play yeah i know um yeah i'm just saying because uh, like as you said we're middle-aged people right and especially now with a lot of this kind of work at home with coronavirus and that sort of thing i mean if i buy a playstation i still need a pc at home right so would you say the cost of a cheap in or relatively cheaper end pc for kind of like email and work from home and that sort of thing plus the cost of the PS4, you know, so I have something for gaming and something for work, would that still be below, say, a good gaming PC, which I could use for both gaming and work? Oh, for sure. I mean, if you're buying a, a PlayStation 4 and a, let's let's take a price point of uh, $400 for a computer, 
I mean, but four hundred dollars for a computer, you'd be getting a, a relatively like low end, not even medium range computer, mid range computer. You'd be getting a low. But it could still do email and that sort of thing, right? Oh yeah, yeah. You, you'd be able to work from it. You'd be able to do some basic PC gaming. Uh, and how much is a PS4 now? Out of uh, it's fifteen thousand and oh well, it's forty nine ninety nine for the PS5. Uh, in Taiwan, it's fifteen thousand. So if you got a PS5 and a low end PC, you'd be capping out about let let's say a eight hundred or so. Yeah, eight hundred, yeah. nine hundred. Um, so th I mean that could be doable, and definitely that would be much cheaper than a sort of mid to high range gaming PC. Okay, yeah, because the graphics card for the what the three eighty is seven ninety nine. Seven ninety nine plus you'd pay seventy nine seven at least seven ninety nine for a monitor. Not right, that's just the card is seven ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, okay. so like even my computer, I've spent at least two thousand dollars on, uh, and that is mid to high range. If you're talking extremely high range, you're talking four five thousand US at least. Now you also have to factor in though things like uh, PlayStation uh, PlayStation Plus or traditionally they have Xbox Gold, right? I mean, like for instance, PlayStation Plus. I'm I'm paying. Uh, I don't remember how much. I, I said it last time. What was it forty five dollars a year, fifty dollars, sixty dollars a year? I don't remember. You know, my memory is I, as equal yeah, as bad as yours. But I mean, I'm paying like sixty dollars a year for that. So I mean, over the course of of the six year cycle or whatever, that's like three hundred and sixty dollars added on to my initial investment. Whereas PC gaming is is mostly free online, correct? Uh, totally, totally, totally. Um, PC gaming wise, uh. Did you pay anything? I'm thinking Steam, Epic Store. Uh, no, no, no. You you don't pay anything at all. Okay. Now that now, admittedly though, that might change because like as we see, Xbox Game Pass is coming to PC, and I think they're getting rid of Xbox Live Gold just and just doing Game Pass. So I mean, that's going to be if you're PC or Xbox, you're paying for the same thing. Uh, and obviously now with streaming like Stadia or uh, Amazon Luna. Obviously, those features are all going to be paid for. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how price works in the future. It's it's definitely changing from the traditional model of that we have. So, okay, yeah, <laughs> uh, I love talking about this stuff. I never get to talk about it in Taiwan. Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mister Gray, we should move things along. We are yeah, we're a little bit over. Okay, so, uh, Korean, do you want to get started, or do you want me to start with our topic for today? Um, let me get, uh, actually, yeah, no, why don't you get us started? 